Hello staff, today we're going to be going over our document cameras and how we're going to disconnect them from our classroom environments, take them home and be able to use them in a distance learning model um, if that's something we need to do. So before you, um, we've got the two different style document cameras that you're going to find in most of your classrooms. If you happen to have a one-off, please reach us out at the uh, help desk. Uh, should you have questions, but this should be pretty commonplace on all of them. Uh, we're going to go through the different cables that are connected to them, the cables that you need to take, and the additional accessories for the surface that you need to have. Once we go through all of that, we'll show you the reverse steps of it, connecting it to your surface, and then getting the software launched for you to use in Schoology, or to do a screencast with, or any numerous thing that you might want to use while teaching outside of your classroom. So. Like I said, we have the two different document cameras, all right? The first one here is the older style camera. The biggest difference between this and this is going to be where they plug in. The older style camera is here on the sides, whereas the new camera all plugs in on the back, okay? Those are gonna be the two biggest things that you find. Now we're gonna go ahead and sample with this one right now. So give me just a second here. And let me kind of give you an idea of a possibility of what you're going to see. Keep in mind, you may or may not have uh, one or possibly two of these cables, depending on if you are using a television or a projector in your classroom. But as a general consensus, when you're looking at the back of the document camera, you're going to see anywhere from two to possibly three cables connected. All right. This blue cable is going to be for those of you who have a projector in your classroom. It's got your little screws on the side. Give it a twist. It'll come out. It'll come off. Keep it to the side. We don't need it, we don't want it, we don't care about it, it's for the classroom. The cables that we're actually worried about are the power cable and our USB cable. Now the power cable, we unplug it. It's gonna be the only circular cable on the document camera itself. You need this cable, and what you're gonna notice is this cable is a nice little brick. So you're gonna have the cable come off. You're gonna have usually a larger brick. Sometimes it's just a larger power head, but usually like this with a breakaway power. Make sure you get both pieces when you're taking it from the classroom so you can use it at home. All right. The next one you have is your USB cable. In this case, we've got the USB cable with the smaller side and the standard side that goes into your computer on the newer document cameras. The older one, we're doing the exact same thing. The only difference is it is the older style USB cables. It's got the little larger kind of square half round end and the end that goes into your computer. So make sure you grab document camera, USB cable, whichever type it is you have, and power charger. If you are in a projector classroom, there's a good chance you do not have this USB cable. Come on by the help desk at 1017 Reno Avenue we can get you those cables to connect the document camera up to your surface. Now that we have our document cameras and we have those cables in our bag, we need to look at the surface itself. So first things first, we can have a couple different options. The best thing I can recommend is to actually take your surface dock, this nice little plug that you always snap in so you can see your monitor and everything, because a surface dock gives you the multiple USB ports to actually connect the cameras along with keyboard or mouse or I don't know a USB fan to keep yourself cool as you're teaching whatever the case may be it's going to have those ports for you the surface dock is just like on the document camera power cable a couple of pieces so in it I, I can't tell you how many cables you're gonna have to, to unplug depends on what you've currently got on your setup the long short of it is unplug everything from it. The only thing we need is going to be this brick and the one round cable for power. And just like the document camera, it too has a breakaway power cable that you want to make sure you grab. So you should have the power brick with its attached cable and the actual interface dock itself with the cable that goes to your surface. If you don't want to bother taking that bulky thing and you're not too stressed about having a bunch of additional things, you can always come by the Reno Help Desk and grab a four port USB hub. And what this little guy does, gives you a USB in that you plug into your surface, which we'll demonstrate here in just a few moments. 
and multiple ports to plug in additional devices. Great for traveling, a little easier. You don't gotta undo all the cable maintenancing that your site tech has already probably done for you. Gives you that other option. Do keep in mind, the small little charger you guys do have, it does have a USB port. I don't recommend it for the surfaces on the documents camera as a general consensus. Just might have hiccups here or there. It's not as stable as necessarily having the dock or the hub itself. So while there and in an emergency situation, you might be able to try using it. Know that your best option is going to be here or here with the dock itself. That's the general gist of what you need aside from obviously your surface. So now I've come home. I've got my document camera, I've got its power cable, and I got that little USB cable I was supposed to bring. Now what? All right, simply put, we're gonna look at the back of our, surf, of our document camera. It's power cable. Like I said, it's the only round, solid round one, so it's gonna go into the only solid round port. Very quick, very easy. USB cable, which is going to plug into the USB port on this one. So that's just that little one here at the end. If you happen to have the older one, it's still a USB port, it's still on the end, but it's that bigger port. And the cables are unidirectional, meaning they're gonna go in one way, one way only. Very straightforward, match the shape to the shape, and plug it on in. From there, you're gonna take your power, obviously, and we're gonna go ahead and throw that into electricity, because otherwise, the camera's not gonna turn on. You should get a red light indicating, hey, camera's got power. And then we just need to decide what we're plugging into. Uh, for argument's sake, let's go ahead and use our docking station. So, we'll take the round in here, plug it into the round hole on our docking station. Plug it into power. And then just like as we always have, dock it right into our surface camera. Once that's done, we'll go ahead and take the USB and dock it right into our surface dock. Sign into your We're gonna sign into our surface just like normal, and we'll launch sphere from there and then turn on our document camera. All you have to do at that point is if you've already got the shortcuts for Sphere, you'll know how to launch it. Otherwise, uh, go down here, you can start typing in Sphere, and it's gonna come up as one of my top recommended. We do have a nice little video that does an actual screencast of the Sphere, of the Sphere software itself and all the features it has. You can check that out. I'm sure we'll provide the links below on this video. Any teacher with a TV, you should be familiar with this. Those who are using projectors, you're probably not, but it is already installed on your computer. So watch that video and you can learn a bunch of cool stuff that you can do. Once that's launched, once it's launched, this is what it's going to look like. It will not see the document camera until I power it on. So after the document camera itself turns on, whatever's sitting underneath it will show up in the, visual, in the actual visualizer software. And like I said, we have a great video on Sphere that goes over all those options. That's the general gist of how you're gonna connect your document camera to your Surface when you're at home. Thank you.